What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome, bike, to the channel. Welcome, bike, to the headquarters. My name is Nicholas. This is BDGE, and it is Monday, which means we are doing a quick little 12 team 2021 fantasy football draft on our favorite platform in the world, Underdog Fantasy. If you have not yet signed up for Underdog, you already lost your league, basically. There's no fucking shot. There's no shot that you're prepared enough to win your fantasy league if you're not on Underdog Fantasy, which is the single best place to draft to prep for your actual season-long leagues against your friends, your families, your coworkers. Hmm. I remember when I used to have coworkers before I got fucking fired. Big getting fired energy out of me today. All right, Monday. Mondays are for getting fired and doing fucking mock drafts. So let's 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 stop the bullshit. Let's tuck our shirts in. I just tuck my whole ass hoodie into my, into, into my sweatpants. If that doesn't get you fired up, I don't know what will. Okay? We're going we're gonna to shift over to the underdog platform. We're going to jump into a draft. And we're going to give you about 55 minutes of pure, unadulterated, raw, unfiltered, beautiful fantasy football analysis. Okay? So this is the platform on Underdog Fantasy that we will be drafting on today. Y'all know the deal for the most part. This is a 12-team league, one quarterback league. Uh, I did a bunch of draft strategy videos last week. So if you're in Superflex or two quarterback, uh, depending on where you're picking from, I did a video picks one through four, picks five through eight, picks nine through 12, all on the channel from last week. If you missed those, check them out. Uh, I will have you prepped and ready and lubed up for your fantasy draft. So let me grab the invite link. Let me throw it into Discord, and let's fill this puppy up. And if y'all uh, if y'all are new to the Underdog platform, one obviously go down download it below. There's a link that'll take you directly to the App Store. Two, we need you to throw ten dollars on your account because all of these drafts are actually money drafts. You come back, you don't do anything in season, but you come back and you collect your money at the end of the season. There's no waiver wire. There's no trades. There's no sit starts. You draft a big-ass team. It's 18 rounds. 18 rounds. You start one quarterback, two running backs, three wide receivers, one tight end, and a flex. The software automatically starts the best player at each position each week. And then you come back at the end of the season after you've done 15 drafts, and you collect your money waiting for two people. Let's go, Discord. Let's go. We need two more. We need two more. Let's go. Mondays are for getting divorced and getting fired. Everyone. We need two more. We've got 10 in here. I don't know where I'm drafting from yet, but I'm telling you guys, this is the best place to prep. It randomly throws you into a draft spot, and then you get to see. Here's the thing. If you throw $10 into your account and you use the promo code BDGE, go through the link, use the promo code BDGE, they're going to give you a free $25 on top of this. On top of this, you're going to have $35 in your account. You're almost going to be as rich as me with that big faux six up there in the top right corner. Oh, we're filled, and we've got the one six. Look at all the homies in the draft. We've got Verzi, who's always just talking shit in the Discord. It's fucking wildly disrespectful. Dylan and David Lee, whatever, whatever. We're going to kick off in uh, 45 seconds. I am at the 106. Man, I wish I knew about Night Mode and Underdog uh, like two years ago. They weren't even alive two years ago, but y'all get the point because this shit is clean. This fucking app is beautiful. And honestly, I always draft from the app. Uh, their their mobile app, which again the link would be in the description, is like really beautifully put together, and they're they're pretty much a mobile first company. Um, so that should tell you how clean it would look. Like this this already looks beautiful, but the mobile app is usually where I do my drafts from. I just do these streams on here so y'all could see the entirety of the window. Um, so that being said, where are we at? Where are we at though? Kicking off. Okay, five picks away. Uh, it's going to put me in an awkward spot probably because we're going to have the first five running backs rip off thy board. It's going to be C-Mac. It's going to be down. You guys are so predictable. You guys are so predictable. C-Mac 101, no questions asked, except for Verzi's going to be a little, a little piece of shit on this Monday. Take his sweet-ass time. 
Um, and for those of you guys watching, wondering about the draft guide, what time is it going to drop? Uh, hopefully at some point in the PM tonight, um, we have a lot of data entry to move over from the old website to the new website, as well as actually moving uh, the the hosting website. So it's going to be some hours away. All right, let's all just take our fucking time on a Monday morning. Like in this economy, I don't have time for this shit. Jackson just texted me the winner of the giveaway, the monkey knife fight giveaway last year. You hung out with us in uh, at my apartment a couple weeks ago. All right, y'all don't need to hear about this shit. Oh, Zebo from left field going with Devontae Adams. I love it. So now I get to take one uh, one of the running backs that I really like. So we got C Mac, Dalvin Cook, Devontae Adams off the board at the 103. I don't think that's really out of the question. I think that could happen in some friends and family leagues. Derrick Henry off the board, Ezekiel Elliott off the board. I'll gladly take Alvin Kamara if I'm sitting there at the 106. You know, Alvin Kamara is a guy that I've talked about being a little bit risky right now in the first round, just given the makeup of the Saints offense. Like, they just might be a pretty bad offense, okay? I know Michael Thomas is out for the foreseeable future. Traquan Smith has been missing some time. It just seems like all the targets are going to go to Alvin Kamara. The question becomes, what happens when they get down by the red zone? You know, if Taysom Hill is the quarterback, are we going to see a dip off in targets from Kamara? Because we saw the splits last year, right? Let's pull these... Pull these little splitty titties up. This is the Rotoviz app. We could look at some splits. We can go with Alvin Kamara. We can go with Taysom Hill. And we're going to say any games where Taysom Hill attempted over 10 passes, just to make sure that we know he's the starter in those four. And there are the splits for you, right? These are Alvin Kamara's numbers with Taysom Hill. Actually, let's just do it to last year. With Taysom Hill versus without him. Uh, yeah, pretty fucking significant. 14.2 PPR points versus 29.23. I would say it's a pretty big deal. Obviously, that last game of the season when he scored six touchdowns is going to heavily skew that. Let's actually put those rushing numbers in there as well. So, yeah, overall, I mean, listen, it's a four-game sample size, so it's hard to take away a huge conclusion from it, but the numbers are pretty significant. Four targets per game with Taysom Hill under center versus uh, 8.27 without. So, with Taysom Hill under center, man, it might get a little bit tricky there. It might get a little bit tricky. So, that's that's the risk with Kamara. But, again, like, if he falls you at the 106, you can't pass up a guy like that who has just, uh, obviously, the RB1 upside. After Kamara, we saw Aaron Jones go off the board, Austin Eckler, Nick Chubb, and if any, if at any point you guys are drafting on the desktop, you could just click this little button right here, and it'll show you the draft board. <clears throat> so we've had Alvin Kamara, Aaron Jones, Austin Eckler, Nick Chubb, Saquon Barkley, Najee Harris at the 111, Tyreek Hill, Joe Mixon, Antonio Gibson, Jonathan Taylor, Travis Kelsey, Calvin Ridley, and now we're going to be sitting here at the 2-7, and we can look at some running backs, we look at some wide receivers, so... Stefan Diggs goes off the board. He would have been Diggs or Calvin Ridley. I probably wouldn't have, would have been okay drafting. Um, but I like, I really like to start with the double running backs. You guys know that. So Clyde, I feel like is a pretty, uh, is a pretty safe bet here to have a really nice floor. And we have a lot of ceiling with Alvin Kamara. So we'll start with Kamara. We'll start with Clyde over to Lair. I get a lot of questions about Clyde over to Lair. My take on Clyde over to Lair is this, like, I don't think you need to have, <clears throat> This is what fantasy football like does to people. They feel like they need to be for or against a player. Like you need to hate Clyde Edwards Hilaire or you need to love him. I am neither. I think that Al uh, Clyde Edwards Hilaire is just not as talented as one his draft. The fact that he was drafted ahead of Jonathan Taylor, Cam Akers, DeAndre Swift, Jacob, like drafted ahead of those guys, wildly ridiculous, just irresponsible by the Chiefs. That being said. Can he be a good NFL running back? Of course he can. And he's in a situation where, you know, you look at the range of outcomes for a guy like Clyde Hilaire. Can he, like, be a bad NFL running back and still finish this year with 12 to 14 touchdowns because he's in the Chiefs offense? And the Chiefs have a very, very improved offensive line. Um, you know, and Damian Williams is obviously opt uh, went over to Chicago and Le'Veon Bell is no longer in Kansas City. You know, that backfield should be Clyde Edwards Hilaire. So... The range of outcomes is that a, he has a very, very high touchdown rate, finishes with like 12 to 1,300 yards from scrimmage, catches his 50 passes, whatever. Like the upside is very much there. I don't think he has top five upside because I don't think he's good enough to really do that. Um, but I think he's got a safe floor. You know, like who is actually going to take away touches from him? 
Uh, and that, that was the problem last year. So the way I kind of talked about it, like yesterday, I did a live stream draft as well. So if you missed that, you can go peep it. The way I looked at it was like, okay, if you put any other of those sophomore running backs in his situation where they handed him 25 touches per game off the fucking rip, those guys would have blown the fuck up. Those guys would have been top five, six, seven, eight fantasy running backs, right? You put JT in in the situation that Clyde had last year. Remember, Clyde was getting like 20 plus touches per game right away. Put JT there, you put Dobbins there, you put Swift there, you put Gibson there, you put Akers there. All those guys would have been elite fantasy options. Clyde went the other way. He got worse as the season progressed. Le'Veon Bell came in and took touches away. So I'm just making the case for and against, right? Just making the case for and against. This is how you should be looking at every player. You should be making the case for and against. And depending on how strong the pull is on both sides of the equation, you start to factor in the draft capital and then you go from there. Okay. Uh, so we have two running backs off the rip. What makes me a lot more comfortable just getting these middle round value wide receivers. We'll see if George, I don't even mind taking George Kittle if he falls to me here. I don't have a lot of George Kittle uh, investments. So what I'd actually really like to do here. I'm, I'm a little bit nervous about Swift down at the 3-6. He's already hurt uh, second preseason in a row. He's kind of entered the year banged up, and I just think Jamal Williams is going to be so fucking annoying in that offense. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start with George Kittle at the t tight end three. It's not an approach. I actually think this might be the first share of George Kittle that I have in any of these drafts. And again, like if you join if you join underdog and you deposit 10 bucks, again, these are not just mock drafts. These are actual leagues that you're playing against these other 11 guys and you win money in them. You just don't actually make moves after the draft. You get to do the funnest part of fantasy football. It's just drafting. So when you deposit 10, use the promo code BDGE. They're going to throw $25 on top of it. You could do 11 of these $3 drafts. 11 of these $3 drafts, and then you can give $2 to the homeless guy that lives on your corner that smokes crack, and his name is Greg, and you know that because you stayed up until 6 a.m. last weekend talking to him about his life story. It's a very hypothetical situation. Didn't happen. George Kittle at the 3-6. Here's what I'm going to be looking to do. After this weekend, I just can't imagine a situation where Trey Lance is not on the field sooner rather than later. I will be looking to stack. I will be looking to double, triple stack Trey Lance with George Kittle and then either Ayuk or uh, Ayuk or Debo Samuel. So if Ayuk falls to me at the 4 7, I'll probably pull trig on that. If he doesn't, I could probably get Debo Samuel definitely at the 5 6. Maybe may, I, I might take the chance and, and rip it at the 6 7, but we'll see where Ayuk ends up going. He's been going earlier and earlier. Uh, he's a guy that I absolutely adore this year. I just think he's, he's so good. And when you look at what Ayuk did over the second half of the year. And listen, I know a lot of you guys said that Kittle and Debo were off the field, but at the same time, like that's exactly what you like to see. And it wasn't, it wasn't, you know, Brandon Ayuk's breakout at the second half of the year. It wasn't just like he was good when those guys were out. He was, he was an all pro caliber type player when those guys were out. I want to, I want to bring up his, uh, and, and, and keep in mind, he, he, he both dealt with COVID. He had a COVID stint here. And I believe it was like a pulled hamstring, um, over the second half of the year when he broke the fuck out. Okay, so you look at starting in, starting right here against New England. Six, ah, fuck me. Like, these are consecutive weeks in a row that he just went absolutely bonkers for. Six for 115. 8 for 91 and a touchdown, 7 for 75 a touchdown, 5 for 95 a touchdown, 10 for 119, 9 for 73 and a touchdown. And then I believe in week 17, I want to say he got hurt there. Um, I really want to say he got hurt there. So if you look at like the seven weeks in a row that he was the guy, he operated as the alpha, right? He wasn't just force fed volume. Like he was amazing with the volume. I just think Brandon Ayuk is an absolute star. I think he's a stud. Um, if you look at Matt Harmon's reception perception and everything that he says about his route running and separation, he, he, Ayuk's next up. And I've just, we've seen what Trey Lance can do in this offense. We've seen just how high of an upside this overall offense is going to have. I just think this is a situation where I don't want to think ironically too hard about it. All right. So Cooper cup was the one guy I would be thinking about now, you know, Ayuk becomes a tough evaluation here. Um, I'm really glad we took running backs because now we don't have to decide with Travis Etienne and uh, Jacobs. Uh, Mike Evans, sure. I have a, I have a decent amount of Mike Evans sacks because I go with Tom Brady a lot. I have I really don't have any Julio Jones shares, unfortunately. Um, 
But I'm going to stick with what what the uh, what we have going on here. Grab Brennan Ayuk at the four seven. We have Ayuk and Kittle, and we'll make sure that we grab Trey Lance somewhere in like the eighth or ninth round, so that he doesn't fall away from us because we have that San Francisco stack. And I know because this is a whole big dogs uh, draft, right? Everyone from the Discord is just watching my team and being like, "Oh, he's got that San Fran, San Fran stack. He's going to grab Trey Lance, and then someone's going to grab him in front of me and get me really, really fucking riled up on a Monday morning." In this economy, um, so yeah, the, the the end of the day, Ayuk is just a, a a baller, amazing separator. Saw him do it on an NFL field for for at least half a season, and now they bring in a quarterback that has that's giving this offense an elite ceiling. Um, it's coming into his prime, second year. Like just 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 stop thinking about think about it too hard. Travis Etienne, big loser over the weekend. Uh, ne- tomorrow's video is going to be basically like uh, it's going to be uh, five running backs that you need to stay away from, that you need to avoid this year in fantasy football. Uh, a little bit more in-depth break. But I've done a few videos like that, so I'm going to probably stay away from most of the guys I've talked about. This is going to be – tomorrow's video is going to be in relation to the preseason games. So we we can take a lot of insights away from the preseason games this weekend. I, uh, I went back last night. I went back this morning to look at – the preseason games from you know Thursday through Sunday, and looking at the first team snaps and shares and how uh, touches and and just overall first team usage was divvied up, and Travis Etienne in the fourth round is just an absolute no go. They used Hyde, they used Etienne, they used James Robinson, who was the starter and got the majority of the starter touches uh, right out the gate with Trevor Lawrence. Um, it's very 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 telling. You guys got to understand that preseason statistics don't mean a fucking thing, but what you want to see is how the coaches are deploying the first team offense, right? Cuz this is how they imagine the first team offense going out. Like you don't you don't throw a guy out there with Trevor Lawrence if you don't expect him to be the actual starter in regular season, right? You don't just practice random guys out there for no reason. Um so James Robinson and Carlos Hyde are easily like it, it, we can't be surprised that they're doing exactly what they told us they were going to do. Use a three-headed running back by committee and it doesn't look good for Travis Etienne. So fourth round is just way too fucking early. Okay. Um, yeah, and Miles My- Gaskin, same same conclusion basically with Malcolm Brown and Salvin Ahmed. It's going to be a three headed kind of thing going on there. So I'm I'm staying away from that situation as well. Running backs, yeah. So Miles Gaskin needs to drop down your board significantly. Javonta Williams looked fantastic. Uh, admittedly, he's been someone that I've been pushing away from. Again. What I look for in preseason usage is what happens with the first team. We can't ta- we can't take away anything from what happened here because Melvin Gordon wasn't playing. So, Javante Williams looked great. Good first sign. What happens when Melvin Gordon's back? He's probably the starter, probably getting at least 50% of the touches. So, I do tend to stay away from that area. All right. So, we're sitting at the 5-6. Don't want to ask. And none of these running backs are uh, sexy enough for me to want to jump up for. We're going to look at the wide receivers. Jamar Chase starting to drop down a little bit. I should probably get some Adam Thielen shares because I don't really have any, even though he's someone that I'm trying to stay away from. Okay, cool. I actually, like, low-key in my heart wanted Jamar Chase, so I'm glad they took him instead of uh, Thielen. Jamar Chase started going at, like, the 4-5, 4-6, and then I think we've heard some reports about him having a little bit of trouble separating and, like, Joe Burrow, the Joe Burrow news is way more concerning than the Jamar Chase not being able to separate because, listen, you don't just you don't just not separate to fucking 2,000 yards and 20 touchdowns, okay, in, in the fucking SEC. That, that's just not how it works. So um, I, I'm okay with uh, beat reporters telling me whether or not a wide receiver can separate in shorts. Um, so we, we actually saw T. Higgins go at the 412, and we saw Jamar Chase go at the 5-6. I'm I'm fine taking whichever of those two falls deeper to me. I'm a big fan of T. Higgins. Um, he had been going about a round later than Jamar Chase at one point this offseason, so I was kind of in on it. But Jamar Chase there is fine. Wide receiver two behind Brandon Ayuk. So we've got Kamara, Clyde, Brandon Ayuk, Jamar Chase. We're eight picks away. Let's show the big board. Also, if you're new to the channel, obviously uh, subscribe. Hit the button right down below. It literally fucking says subscribe. If you're in Spanish or French, subscribio. It'd be beautiful. Um, we'll be doing fantasy videos like this every single day leading up to your drafts. And make sure you hit the thumbs up button if you don't hate the video. Okay, so this is the draft board so far. 
Uh, a lot of green in the first round, and then you could see at the end of the second into the third, a lot of orange, so a lot of wide receivers going off the board. Again, this is a one quarterback, half PPR league. You're starting one QB, two running backs, three wide receivers, one tight end, and one flex. So wide receivers get a little bit of a boost because it is start three wide receivers, but it's also half PPR, so they're not really scoring that many points to begin with. Um, yeah, we're, we're seeing the same. See, this is why it's really good to practice on this on this, uh, on this this site because you see a lot of the same trends, man. You see all the running backs early, wide receivers, second, third round. You see quarterbacks start to trickle in third, fourth, fifth round. That's where, like, the top six guys go. And then there's always like, a little bit of a tear break. Oh, we're seeing Anton. I am pushing Antonio Brown's ADP up, up. You ever get your shit pushed in? It's like Antonio Brown. I have this first question I would ask him if I fucking seen him in real life because his shit is getting pushed all the way in there at the six two. I believe that's the earliest I've ever seen him go in, in one of these drafts. He was like a, he was legitimately like a ninth round pick two weeks ago, and you absolutely love to see. He should be going in the sixth seventh round. He should be, and I will keep saying that until he is. Nope, that's not what anybody wants to see. Let me go back to the draft because we are almost on the clock. Oh, see, this is where I kind of wish I did not take Kittle because TJ Hawkinson's about to be available. Uh, wide receivers. Oh, we can get Debo. We can get Debo. Get him. Give it to me. Give me. Vaughn, if you take Debo, I'm about to lose my motherfucking shit. I'll take a shot at Tequila right now if he takes Debo. Oh, thank fucking God. It's like 10 a.m. Whew. We're going to get Debo, and now look at that. We got Ayuk, we got Debo, we got Kittle. We got Kittle. Now, a lot of people ask, what's the point of stacking? Now, uh, Josh Larkey over at Rondo, Roto Underworld does a really good job in the analytical department. He, he dropped an article. He dropped uh, a podcast a few weeks back. If you just uh, Google search Josh Larkey stacking Roto Underworld, you'll be able to find it. He goes into the numbers deep on why it's important to be stacking in these drafts, uh, season-long, best ball, tournaments especially. So I wouldn't do it justice trying to explain it. It's really important in tournaments when you get to like the playoffs, weeks 13, 14, 15, 16, because you need to separate yourself from the pack. And one way of doing that is going all in on one offense, because if one offense explodes, you own the offense. All right. If San Fran has a 40 point week in week 15, there's a good chance that you win that week. Like you are the top dog in that week. So we want to own the entire offense. And I love this stack right now. Ayuk, Debo, George Kittle. And we will make sure that we grab Trey Lance. Uh, I don't know if I have any more leverage to kind of let him fall. I always feel guilty as fuck taking a guy like Trey Lance before Russell Wilson, Justin Herbert. But in a turn in, in a in a setting like this where you don't actually have to do like sit starts and it just starts the best player each week at the at the top position, you don't really have to feel as bad. Um taking a guy like Trey Lance it's not like you are, you know, you're taking multiple quarterbacks. You're going to end up with two or three on your roster and they're going to start the best guy. Uh some interesting notes on LaVisca Chenault. So, LaVisca Chenault in the preseason game, right? One of my big concerns with Jacksonville is I'm not sure how they're going to use their wide receivers because they have Jones, Marvin Jones, they have DJ Chark, they have LaVisca Chenault, okay? And my concern was that LaVisca Chenault's going to be pigeonholed into the slot role. What I saw out of the first preseason game with Trevor Lawrence, Trevor Lawrence played 15 snaps. So, we got a 15-snap sample size of the starters, DJ Chark was not playing. DJ Chark did not play. Colin Johnson was in. When they went to 12 personnel, so two tight ends, right? Two wide receivers on the outside, two tight ends, and one running back. LaVisca Chenault was not one of those wide receivers. LaVisca Chenault was strictly used as a slot wide receiver. When he was used, I loved what I saw. He looked good. They were using him in screen passes. They were using him down the field, getting involved. My concern is that when they run those 30, 35% of plays where it's a double tight end sets, LaVisca Chenault is not going to be on the field. It's going to be Marvin. And the fact that DJ Chark was out and they still did not use LaVisca Chenault as one of the two wide receivers is very, 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 very scary. Okay, so that's a big red flag for me. So LaVisca Chenault should not be going earlier after this game, despite him catching a screen pass. Uh, I will also make a note about Ronald Jones here after I make my pick. So we're starting to see a lot of guys with preseason buzz and whatnot go earlier and earlier. Again, tomorrow's video is going to go in-depth on running backs that we are avoiding because of the first week of preseason. We'll probably do wide receivers after that. Love that pick of Devontae Smith. He's back at practice. Uh, I'm not concerned about the knee whatsoever. 
So this is starting to make James Robinson a little bit more intriguing to me, to be honest with you. He got a lot of starter snaps. He's going to get a lot of touches. He's going to get all the goal line work there. Uh, what we could do, oh, 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 you know, we could do that sexy. Mm, do we want to push it? Yeah, here's what we're going to do. We're going to get Tyler Boyd, even though I think I like Michael Gallup more than I like Tyler Boyd, but we have a strategy here. Uh, Joe Burrow is falling. We're, we're going to take the chance and hope that Trey Lance falls back to me in the eighth round, which was risky and would fuck up my entire draft if it does not happen. And that's really dumb of me. I probably shouldn't have done that. But we're going to hope Trey Lance falls to me. And then we're going to uh, we have definitely no doubt that Joe Burrow is going to fall to me. I've been telling you all to fade Joe Burrow forever, but now he's finally dropping down. He's the quarterback 14. He was the quarterback nine for so long. And I was like, this is ridiculous. He's coming off the ACL. He's clearly not mentally 100 percent ready and back from it. He's going to get off to a slow start, and he's not going to be mobile. And if he's not mobile, then I'm not betting on him to surpass Brady and and all these guys, Matthew Stafford, in passing yardage and passing touchdowns. It's just not going to happen. And it's still a shitty offensive line, as much as you guys want to pretend it's not. Um, what was I saying about Ronald Jones? So with the first team in their first preseason game, uh, the snaps between Jones, Fournette, and unfortunately Gio Bernard were split evenly and Gio Bernard took all of the third down work there were two third down snaps Gio Bernard took both of them had two targets two receptions 16 yards uh so Ronald Jones is now splitting early down work with Leonard Fournette and he's not going to get any of the pass catching work because it looks like Gio is going to solidify that role it's a hit to Ronald Jones it's a hit to Leonard Fournette um and it is not good for all parties involved there um, so Ronald Jones, you're not, do not take him in the seventh round. Do not take, I, that's the earliest I've seen him go in a long time. Uh, Ronald Jones and Leonard Fournette are both, uh, probably double digit round picks at this point. And Geo's, I don't know if you're in a PPR league, maybe you can grab him in like the 15th round or some shit. Maybe he fucks around and catches like 50 passes, but I'm not really about to draft him. I like that pick Moisey. If I'm a big fan of Michael Gallup this year, uh, DJ Chark is off my board completely broken hand. I just don't trust that passing offense. Marvin Jones looks to be the number one guy there. He really, really does. Um, we've kind of been saying that all off season. Marvin Jones, the guy to, to own there, even, even, uh, still he is the least expensive option. Did someone take him already? No, he's still all the way down at wide receiver 55 ADP 109. It makes no fucking sense below Devonte Parker, below Michael Pittman, below Hollywood court. Ah, that's just, that's just silly. All right, all right. Is Trey Lance going to fall to me? This is the moment of truth. Jackson, don't fucking do it to me. Oof, oof. I, I'm going to be honest. I'm pretty fucking nervous right now. All three of these guys have quarterbacks. We have Russ, we have Lamar Jackson, we have Josh Allen. So hopefully that means they will skip on their QB2 for now. They have AJ Dillon. Okay, okay, okay. If I already took, if I didn't want to take Trey Lance, I would definitely queue up James Robinson here. Love that J Jalen Waddle pick. I think he's going to explode this year. Miko Hardman, off your board. It's got to be. Let's go. Trey Lizzie. Trey Lizzie. Hey. 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 Trigger. Trey Lance, Brandon Ayuk, Debo, George Kittle. What a stack. And we're going to be able to get Joe Burrow probably much later. We'll throw him in the queue, though, at the bottom. Um, so some other notes to talk about some of these guys. Uh, Raheem Mostert did not play in their first preseason game. Curtis Samuel did not play. He just got back from – he missed like two months of practice. Curtis Samuel, he's just dropping down my board further and further and further and further. He's missed too much practice time. New quarterback. Um yeah, I just, I, I'm just not a guy that's going to be drafting Curtis Samuel. Love Jarvis Landry, out of value. Uh, Michael Carter is another guy that we could talk about splitting snaps in that Jets backfield. He was actually the – he wasn't even the starter. Uh, though I'm not, like, too, too worried. Tevin Coleman didn't play at all, and Ty Johnson played over Michael Carter. They split snaps, and Ty Johnson took all the third down snaps, all the third down work with the first team. Um, but, you know, most, most coaches don't just throw rookies right into the mix as the starters, so – um, here's what I'll say. I'm not more concerned about Michael Carter than I was before because I was never as high on him as most of you guys are. People love Michael Carter and I get it, but he's a fourth round pick and they're going to use a committee there in New York. 
I'm really hoping James Robinson falls to me, man. Like, I don't know why you guys, like, how can James Robinson go at the 8 11 and Travis Etienne at the, f- how can you watch the preseason game this, this, uh, this weekend and take Travis Etienne, what was it, five rounds earlier, four full rounds earlier? I don't know. It doesn't make sense to me. I would put a pretty significant amount of money that James Robinson out touches and outscores, uh, touchdown wise, Travis Etienne this year. Like I, the only path I really see to ETN outscoring. Listen, I, I love ETN for dynasty, but for redraft this year, the only way I see him outscoring James Robinson is if he catches eighty passes, and I don't. That's just not gonna happen. It just ain't finna happen, boys, boys and girls, boys and girls and oompa loompas. Zach Moss, I don't know what his deal is right now. I think he's dealing with a hamstring strain, a hamstrizzy. Who do we like here? I have no Brandon Cook shares. I don't know. Something in me is just like, I get it. Like everyone's like, oh, it's Brandon Cooks, you know, a thousand yards every year. He's the number one, but I don't really know how good Brandon Cooks is going to be operating as the number one in an offense, especially in an offense led by Tyrod Taylor. Like I really want no part of that. I might just straight up take Marvin Jones here. Should probably grab another running back or two. Uh, Gus is going to be a problem. I don't want James Conner. He's already banged up. Melvin Gordon, I feel like, continues to fall. Tavius Murray, there were some interesting reports today that he might be on a might be on the bubble for a roster spot, which is crazy because they just fucking released Stevie Scott, which I was really upset about because I picked him up in Dynasty and I thought he was going to make his way into a role this year on New Orleans. I'm not surprised that they're like going to cut Latavius Murray. I'm surprised they're thinking about doing it after they cut Stevie Scott. They brought in Devonta Freeman, but neither of them looked good. Um, so I figured they would just hold on to two guys or both of those guys, you know. But maybe it's just Kamara's backfield straight up. All right, well, there goes Brandon Cooks. I probably straight... Oh, Glizzy. Nice nice grab on Tanyan, but I already had kills, so I'm not too upset about it. You probably think I'm fucking yelling about it right now. Uh, just from a team-building perspective, I, pro- I, w- I would rather take Jones over these two, but I think I need to uh, grab another running back. So I'm going to take Gus because he's guaranteed a workload for sure. Uh, so the team right now, Trey Lance, Alvin Kamara, Clyde over to Lair, Gus Edwards... Ayuk, Jamar Chase, Debo Samuel, Tyler Boyd, George Kittle. And I also know that a few rounds later into the draft, uh, here are some of my favorite my favorite later round wide receivers. Um, Terrace Marshall looked fucking phenomenal in his debut. He did have the broken coverage on that 60-yard play, which I'm not like going to get gassed up about. People fucking be gassing anything on Twitter. But, uh, but he looked phenomenal. So pumped I got some dynasty shares. Manuel Sanders, um, Brian Edwards, Interesting note, Brian Edwards is not, they're not playing him in their first preseason game, their next preseason game, which is big because that's like, it's like Derek Carr, Josh Jacobs, Brian Edwards, and a couple other guys. Uh, so that should tell you a little bit something. Marquez Calloway and Jacoby Myers are my favorite later round picks. Like these are the wide receivers you need to be targeting later on in, uh, later on in best ball drafts and just regular drafts in general. I think Jacoby Myers. Marquez Calloway. I think all these guys have like low end, uh, probably like high end wide receiver three in the range of outcomes and not a not a terrible chance of hitting those. These are my favorite later on guys. So I know I can get wide receiver depth later on. So I'm okay uh, grabbing my, my running backs now. Looks like most people are still sitting on quarterbacks. So I think I could probably go another round without trying to take Burrow. It's a little bit risky probably, but I'm probably going to go with it. Oh, nice pick Mason D. Mason Diuk. You know what else is pretty uh, awesome? Um, Underdog does. Since we're partnering with Underdog, obviously, make sure you use promo code BDGE when you deposit 10 bucks. You can get in some of these drafts with me. Um, They do... They've, they've partnered with a few people in the space, like on a very exclusive deal, like myself, Jack Settleman, Peter Overzet, guys like that, establish the run. And sometimes they do game contests and giveaways oh man they took the fucking running backs i needed who else do we like here oh this is ugly Kenyon drake no jamal i don't hate jamal williams uh if something does happen to deandre swift he's gonna get a huge workload and i think he's already gonna have a, a pretty significant role Devin singletary no david johnson i've been hyping him up for you guys but he will be in tomorrow's uh fade video unfortunately after seeing the first preseason game it was all philip Lindsay. Philip Lindsay was the starter. He got all the early down work. David Johnson was in on third downs. So he's going to be the pass catching back like I expected. But uh, but I was also expecting like 180 carries from him. 
I, th- I still think he's going to get the goal line work, but not a good start. It's also, he's also like fucking so old that maybe they just didn't want to use him. So again, I'm going to take Jamal Williams here just to grab a fourth running back because otherwise it's going to get ugly really quick. And then there's still a lot of good wide receivers on the board that I like that I could probably grab as my five, six, seven. Cool. Uh, Miko Hardman, Miko Hardman, uh, despite all of the reports that he is the wide receiver too, turns out that was a fucking lie because Demarcus Robinson's still running over him in two wide receiver sets. It's Demarcus Robinson outside, uh, opposite Terry kill, not Miko Hardman. Okay. He plays in the, he's, he plays in three wide receiver sets, but he's not the second wide receiver starter right now. Okay. So unless something changes in the next preseason game, Miko Hartman's going to have the same fucking role, and he looked bad. He's dropping passes, bobbling balls and shit. Like, listen, he's just not a good wide receiver. That's the, that's that's what it comes down to. So, sorry to burst your fucking Miko Hartman bubble, but shit ain't bubblicious, dog. So, uh, what was I just saying? I feel like I had something else to say. That's not what I wanted to do. Oh, yeah, well, they partnered with some creators in the space <clears throat> and they'll do like specific game uh contests with those guys like jack had uh jack's a big basketball guy so they did some giveaways when when it was nba season and jack had like a contest where it was like if you faded jack and you beat him or whatever they put a little uh a little headband around your avatar and they don't have those for anyone else like if you do the avatars you have your your choice of like nine or ten different dogs but if you played against jack you have a, a white headband that goes around you, around your dog, and it's pretty fucking sweet looking. So what we're going to do is during the football season, they're going to run contests for me. We'll probably do some fade Nick contests, which would be really easy to beat. They're going to do some fade animal contests, which will might be the easiest sporting event of all time. Uh, and if you beat us, you're going to get uh, you're going to get a bow tie. We're going to do a bow tie to represent the big dog's logo. Probably a little white bow tie on your dog. It's going to look sick, and I'm pumped about that. Um there's also pick em games on the site, which is fucking awesome. If you're, you know, into the gambling mode or whatnot, you know, uh, they'll, they'll, you, you can put together a little parlay where it's like you throw down 10 bucks and they'll give you like over under on Jamar Chase's receiving yards, over under on Trey Lance's fantasy points. You could parlay them up. 10 bucks turns into 30, 40, 50 bucks. So it's almost like uh, you get you get the best of both worlds here. You get fantasy, but you get in-game NFL in-season action. And we've actually been killing the uh, the preseason slates. When's the next? Uh, oh boy, what did I do? When's the next slate of preseason games start up? Oh no, that's regular season. Oh poops. We are three picks away. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Ah, oh, the running backs are off the board. Oh, no, I took Jamal Williams. I'll probably sit on running back right now and take a flyer on... Chuba looked good, but again, he's just strictly a handcuff. Ramondre looked like a beast. Justin Jackson's probably the number two in L.A. All signs are pointing towards it, so I don't hate that. He's been injured so much. Salvin Ahmed. Uh, so those are three running backs I'll be targeting much later in drafts. Let's look at the wide receivers again. So Joe Burrow's still sitting there. Uh, we're starting to move down the list on quarterbacks. So it might be smart for me to grab Burrow. Yeah, I think I need to grab Burrow because that stack goes to shit if I don't have it. So I'm going to go Burrow. <clears throat> and I actually love I, – I really like the team that I have so far, which I usually never do. You guys always just bully me into having a fucking team I hate. Trey Lance, Joe Burrow, Kamara, Clyde. Gus, Jamal Williams, Brandon Ayuk, Jamar Chase, Debo Samuel, Tyler Boyd. Look at that. All five pass catchers are stacked with my quarterbacks. This is the first time I've successfully pulled that off in this format. I'm feeling fucking sexy. Feeling, I'm feeling agreeable today. Uh, Thursday, August 19th. That's in three days. Let's see if they have any pickums on the site already. They got any NFL? Nah, not yet. They'll probably have the NFL going when uh, when it's actually the day of the games. But we're going to fucking nail those pick them. So make sure you're signed up. Again, use promo code BDGE. They're going to throw $25 on top. So you're going to have $35 to use on the pick them games, which are sick. It's actually like hella fun. Like you just choose over under. If any of y'all play baseball, right? And you see the multiplier on the right side there. 
fucking Brett Gardner is definitely going over 0.5 total bases, right? Right? I don't know who Austin Riley is. I don't really follow baseball. What else we got? Tukey Toussaint's. We're going under five and a half strikeouts, and we're going to throw $10 on this. Boom. I could share my picks with you guys. I could share my slips. That's pretty cool. So you can, like, follow me. If you're following me on Twitter, I'll share my slips with y'all. So we're about to make a quick 30 bucks off baseball. I don't even know what the fuck I'm doing. Okay. Uh, Rashad Bateman, uh, he's not a pick I advise right now in best ball because he has the groin surgery. He'll be back later in September. Uh, rookie wide receivers coming off these injuries in preseason take a really long time to get situated in, into the lineup. So Rashad Bateman, as much as I love that guy, I'll take him into every dynasty draft I have. Uh, he's not a guy I'm investing into in redraft right now. David Johnson already did my spiel on him. Rondell Moore <clears throat> uh, looked amazing in the first preseason game. My only concern is that just like everything he does is going to be like four yards around the line of scrimmage. And it's just we're just going to see so many games of like five for 36 and two carries for six yards. Um, we'll see how if he can get involved at all down by the red zone. Uh, that's my only concern with Rondell Moore. Looked great, though. All right, Tannehill. John o. Smith has a low ankle sprain. He should be fine for the regular season. He's a guy I'm really, really high on. Um, any other guys that don't have really strong takes on? Uh, you should be drafting Marquez Callaway over Traquan Smith. Number one, Jackson, you're fucking fired. Nelson Aguilar, uh, we should be taking Jacoby Myers over Nelson. This, this is like the ultimate arbitrages here. We take Brian Edwards over John Brown. We take Marquez Callaway over Traquan Smith. We take Jacoby Myers over Nelson Aguilar. And that's how you win your league. The guys behind me have a lot of wide receivers. So let's they'll probably pivot away, which is nice because we can grab Brian Edwards. For those guys that don't know Brian Edwards, and you're like, why the fuck does anyone like Brian Edwards? He didn't do shit last year. He didn't do shit last year. He did get hurt early on, which I think kind of skewed how the rest of the season went for him. But... Brian Edwards has a phenomenal prospect profile and everything that's like predictive about a college player being good in the NFL. Ooh, they redid the fucking website. This is uh interesting. 6'3, 212. He's young. He's still 22. 80th percentile speed score for his weight. Broke out. This is the crazy part. 100th percentile breakout age. 100th percentile breakout age. Broke out at 17 years old in the SEC. 29% college target share, 80th percentile, college dominator in the 94. Like, come on now. I don't know if you could find a better fucking prospect profile than uh, than what Brian Edwards have. And now all signs and all reports and rumors are just him ripping up the camp. So when there's smoke, there's hell of fire. And Brian Edwards is in a an abandoned building that's been lit up in gasoline. Oh, the glizzy guy. There you go. Finally listening to me. Went with Marquez Calloway. Oh, I'm hoping Jacoby Myers falls back to me. I'm not feeling good about that. Let's see who else we can throw down. Since we have Trey Lance on our team, and since we have Joe Burrow, who I think is a little bit risky behind that line, we likely will grab a third quarterback here. And honestly, I wouldn't hate if it's Taysom Hill. I don't hate if it's Cam Newton. Just to get some points in your lineup in the beginning weeks before Trey Lance gets out there. Uh, so we'll probably reverse engineer whoever our pass catchers are to whoever our third quarterback is going to be. <coughs> oh, boy. <coughs> Your boy is dying. I was up to like 3 a.m. working on the draft guide last night. Only reason I even want to fucking sleep is because the web developer wanted to go to sleep. Uh, and there goes Jacoby Myers. You guys have been listening. Good. I'm proud. I'm proud. You know, I'm not even mad. I'm proud. Proud of you guys. Gabriel Davis, uh, Jalen Rager. I guess I don't hate taking a flyer on Jalen Rager, even though Quez Watkins is looking good as hell too. Uh, Sterling Shepard, I feel like, is low-key going to get way more volume than people realize. I think he's going to be a really, really big safety valve blanket for Daniel Jones. Paris Campbell looked very good. Um, was not – he did not play on – he only played on like 40% of the starter snaps though, which is a little bit concerning. Adam Troutman also – uh, has quickly become a a really easy fade for me. Uh, I believe he's he's starting to drop down a lot. Like who, he just went off the board as tight end sixteen. So I guess there is fine taking a flyer on him. But the thing about Troutman is he did absolutely like next to nothing last year. And of players that had fewer than two hundred receiving yards in their rookie year, tight ends, um, ninety five percent of them 
don't top 400 yards the next year, don't top three touchdowns the next year, don't top 40 catches. So if we are expecting a breakout from Troutman, this is another another uh, one of those where it's like we're one year too early on him, okay? We need to wait one more year to be really hyped on Troutman in redraft leagues. And he, uh, he only played like half of the snaps with the starters on Sunday too, which was pretty concerning. Didn't get targeted at all, so... Damn, I really wanted J.D. McKissick there. Uh, so I guess Philip Lindsay is going to open as a starter. I still don't. He's he has such fucking empty calorie cal- carries. He's not going to catch passes. He's not going to get goal line work. So I really don't like. Him. I really loved what I saw about saw out of Ahmed and Malcolm Brown should be a guy also rising up draft boards really quickly. I have a lot of late round uh, Malcolm Brown, which I'm pretty happy about. Uh, we'll wait because I don't think I'm going to need to take any of these guys right now. And we're going to go ahead and just take Sterling Shepard and grab that volume. I'm going to throw the board up because I have to pee really bad. You guys can check out the board if you'd like. While I'm while I'm chilling, while I'm peeing, make sure you go scroll down, hit the uh, thumbs up button, hit the subscribe button, all that good shit. All right, I'll be back in a minute. Chicka chicka yeah chicka what chicka d? How art thou? Oh boy, I gotta stop doing that shit. Three picks away, we ain't even miss a pick. We ain't even miss a peel. All right, so all my homies went off the board. We had uh, Cole Beasley. I have zero fucking shares of Cole Beasley, and I don't plan on it. Uh, not because he's crazy, but because uh, Emmanuel Sanders is the wide receiver too there. I'm on Ross St. Brown. I like, uh, he played strictly in the slot. Unfortunately, uh, I don't think he's going to get any real outside wide receiver reps right now. At least I think he can earn a role into that though. I do think he can. Um, but that's the usage that we saw in the first preseason game. Sammy Watkins just fucking no. Christian Kirk looked good. Christian Kirk looked good. Deami Brown got a deep pass from Fitzpatrick, which you love to see. Love that pick of Ferkser. I think Ferkser is just getting wildly underrated as a, uh, <clears throat> as a tight end now. See what wide receivers we got rocking here. Oh, my MVS, bro. MVS, I, I've been telling you guys to grab MVS at the end of like every best ball 14, 15, 16th round. Uh <clears throat> only because he's still so cheap relative to like they didn't bring in any other wide receivers. They brought in Amari Rogers, and Amari Rogers is strictly a slot guy. Um, but there's been some like really almost borderline unnecessary buzz about MVS because Regardless, so he's a great best ball format because he's tied to Aaron Rodgers and he's going to fucking suck for a redraft. Like, you you don't want to grab a guy like him um, in season-long leagues where you actually have to decide whether or not to sit start him, but he's going to have really, really big week. Well, I can, what, who am I talking about right now? Marquez Valdez. Did I spell his name wrong? Is it an S? 
Yeah, I'm tripping right now. Marquez, Valdez, Valdez, Scantling. What is this man's name? I have a hunch Marquez Valdez Scantling is going to have a monster season for him at least. It's a reporter from The Athletic. I trust The Athletic. They're a good source. This is a beat reporter from Green Bay. Um, from what he's seen in camp, what I've read, Marquez Valdez Scantling is running pure. Suggestion in here, MVS is ahead of Alan Lazard and others in the battle to start opposite Devontae Adams, Randall Cobb. Oh, yeah. I don't even know why I said Amari Rogers. I meant Randall Cobb. Uh, obviously in the slot. I'm drafting a lot of MVS. Correct. That is the correct take. Yeah, so uh, grab MVS at the end of best ball drafts. Do yourself a favor in the 14th, 15th round. I got to learn how to work this fucking software one day. One day I will, I will actually act like I do this for a living. One day I won't be a fucking moron. Okay. Oh, none of my running backs went off. That's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing we like. Dude, I love this fucking team. If this shit don't bring home the fucking cheddar in this league, I... There's, there was just no cheddar to be had. Put it that way. So I'm looking at it. Yubbish. James White. Get my pick of these running backs. How do I, how do I rank these running backs? I think I got to go Malcolm Brown first. Malcolm Brown ran as the starter. Uh, he got the goal line carry. So all signs point. I just think that's going to be his fucking role in the season. He's going to get like eight to ten carries a game, but he's probably going to take the goal line work, man. It's going to be annoying, but he's going to have games where he puts up 12 to 13 fantasy points and he's usable. Um, and, you know, Brian Flores came out and said we're going to use a three-headed three headed, three -headed uh, committee in the backfield. It's, it's just not Miles Gaskin's job anymore, y'all. Stop taking him near the fifth round. It's just, it's just erroneous. Erroneous and silly. <clears throat> T.Y. Hilton. Eh, I'd rather take shots on the other Indianapolis wide receivers. Paris Campbell. I'm pretty confident that Wentz and Nelson are going to be back really early. That makes me a little bit higher on Jonathan Taylor. I feel good. Zach Ertz, that's another thing to monitor. Uh, I told you all to stop drafting Goddard as long as Zach Ertz was there. And uh, what happened with the first team on Sunday, Zach Ertz outsnapped Dallas Goddard 7-5. to five. Yeah, I know. Dallas Goddard had a big catch. Like, I fucking get it. Like, it's, he's not going to put up zero catches for zero yards this year. Like, he's going to make plays, but he's going to be splitting time with Zach Ertz. And it's going to be fucking annoying. So don't draft Dallas Goddard as the tight end seven, please. Actually, Geo becomes a pretty interesting pick in best ball now. Now that we probably know he's going to catch a lot of passes from Tom Brady and be the third down back. I think Boston Scott's pretty fucking underrated, too. I think he's going to have a really big role in that Philly offense. Kerryon Johnson's need uh, week to week with a knee sprain. I feel like that all but assures he's not going to make the roster now. Or wait, did the Eagles drop Jordan Howard? Or is that just a wet dream? This is how you make the team in a crowded running back group. That's facts. Yeah, I actually saw that block. That was That was huge. Okay, he did not get cut. So, not good news for Carrion Johnson. I think you bring a guy like Carrion Johnson too to be. Carrion Johnson is actually low key a very good pass blocker. So, if Jordan Howard could take that role while Carrion Johnson's hurt, he gone. Anyone else interesting down here? Eh, not really. Chris Evans looked very good. Uh, if he's available on your dynasty wire, I would pick him up. Same thing with Kula Herbert. He was a guy that I absolutely love. Uh, both of these guys are listed in our uh, favorite late round rookie picks in our dynasty draft guide, which again is hopefully dropping later tonight. But again, we got a lot of hosting migration bullshits to 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 make light with. Oh, good pick there, Jackson. About time. About time you did something useful. 
Rashad Perriman down here in the 16th. You'd love to see that. Paris Campbell. You guys are getting pretty sharp with your picks. Guys are getting pretty sharp. I guess that's what uh, spending six months with me does to you, eh? Eh? We'll grab one more running back. Hopefully, Justin Jackson falls to me here. What am I doing? Justin Jackson, 200 rushing yards year in and year out. Do I really want that? Do I really want that? Yeah, I fucking do. All right. Oh, wow. I totally forgot we needed another fucking tight end because I... Oh, boy. That was fucked up on my part. I'll take Jarwin. I think Dalton... Didn't Dalton Schultz get... Dalton Schultz get hurt? Uh, I put myself in a bad spot here. Damn. I forgot. Uh, you know what? It was like... It was like... Uh, I drafted George Kittle and then you just kind of get that out of your mind. I mean, with George Kittle, you don't really have to depend on having another wide receiver or another tight end most times. Uh, Donald Parham, I heard some really good reports from him today, so I'm actually going to throw him in the queue as well. No one else really intrigues me outside of Tim motherfucking Tebow. Hang. <coughs> ah. Ah. Holy shit. Damn, dude, this stuff going on in Afghanistan is crazy. Psh, these people are trying to get out so bad. They started climbing a a plane that was taking off to the U.S. and some of them fell from the plane and died, just falling in the sky. Fuck. That's so sad. Wow, didn't mean to dampen the mood, guys. Let's see. Deshaun Jackson, Jameson Crowder, Derek Carr, Blake Jawin, Zach Wilson, Byron Pingu. I kind of hope Ebron falls to me here. Said no one ever. Let's look at what was I reading about Donald Parham? It's clear now that Donald Palmer is going to have a big and influential role in charge of offense. He's lining up mostly detached from the formation, both out wide and in the slot. Ooh. Ooh. Josh Palmer looked great, too. I think he's going to be a really a really nice piece for this offense. Good rookie pick in the third round. So we're going to grab Donald Parham here. And then, then it's up to me to decide if I want another quarterback, if I want to take the QB3, or do I want to use it as the another wide receiver or running back spot. There's someone here that's intriguing to me. I don't hate Van Jefferson running as a three here in LA, but he's facing COVID and Sean Jackson is there. Josh Palmer again, basically what I just fucking said. Quez Watkins has looked good. Yeah, I'm probably chilling. All right, so this is the team so far. I'll just recap it for you. Trey Lance and Joe Burrow at QB. Running backs are Kamara, Clyde, Gus Edwards, Jamal Williams, Malcolm Brown, Justin Jackson. Wide receivers, Ayuk, Chase, Debo, Tyler Boyd, Brian Edwards, Sterling Shepard, Marquez Valdez-Scantling. Tight ends, George Kittle, Donald Parham. I'm really liking the team. Really liking it. As we get closer to the regular season, we have just such a better idea of who to be targeting in the in the late rounds. We know who actually has roles and shit. For a long time, we're just kind of left in the dead zone, not knowing who the running back two is on a roster. Like, you know, should I be targeting Boston Scott or Kenny Gainwell? Should I be targeting Quadra Allison or Javian Hawkins? Or, you know, it, it, it's it's tough to draft in the beginning. It's, it's easy to draft in the beginning because you get so much value, especially at like rookie running back. You get so much value with ADPs just being absolutely shot. Uh, but the, the later rounds are tough. You end up with so many roster spots where it's just guys that don't even end up playing that year. But now we have a good idea after the first week or two of preseason games. So, again, if you're not on the platform yet, the first link in the description will be taking you to the Underdog Fantasy app in the App Store. And from there, when you throw 10 bucks onto your account, use the promo code BDGE, and you're going to get a free $25 on top of that. You could use it for Pick'Em. You could use it for literally $10, $3 best ball drafts. Um, and it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing.
So we've got our last pick. What do you guys think I should do here? Should I take a third QB? I probably should because Burrow's going to start slow. And if Burrow starts slow and Trey Lance doesn't actually start, I might be fucked. Which is why I think a guy like Cam would be a good pick right now. Because if you believe he gets benched eventually, like he should be fine for the first... Um, first few weeks now some of you guys might be asking like why wouldn't you just take Jimmy G to lock up the San Francisco starting quarterback spot and that's actually not a bad idea just because I have so much of this stack but just on a raw like pound for pound basis why you wouldn't want to take the two quarterbacks because you do limit your upside there because that means that for sure you know if you draft three quarterbacks and you know Cam Newton could stay the quarter the could stay the starter for the entire year then you're taking the highest score of these three quarterbacks, right? You give yourself a lot more upside because you have three options each week to choose from. And Cam Newton has games where he has like 30 plus fantasy points. Um, and he started off really hot and then he got COVID and it wasn't hot anymore. But if you draft Jimmy G instead, you give yourself, yes, a little bit more safety in the quarterback two spot, but you have no chance of having three starting quarterbacks on a week to give you the highest point total of those guys. And, uh, and in the software, again, it starts the best players. So you want the highest point total possible. So you want as many options as possible. So that's actually going to be the final roster. We have Trey Lance, Joe Burrow, Cam Newton. We have Kamara, Clyde, Gus, Jamal Williams, Malcolm Brown, Justin Jackson. We have Ayuk, Chase, Debo, Tyler Boyd, Brian Edwards, Sterling Shepard, Marcus Valdez-Scantling, George Kittle, Donald Parham. That's going to wrap up today's draft. Thank you for hanging around. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you subscribe to thy channel. We're doing... Videos like this every Monday, and then we do individual player analysis Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Wednesday. Why did I just skip Wednesday? That's so fucking weird. Like, it's not that we don't do videos on Wednesday. I just literally skipped it. Okay. Uh, my brain is going to turn to mush soon because I barely slept over the last 72 hours. Um, I might take a nap right now, or I might fucking grind until 6 tomorrow morning. Yeah. All right. I'm out. I love you guys. Hit the thumbs up button. Go download the Underdog app right now. You're done with the video. Go download the app. Love you. Bye.